Welcome, everyone. How are we doing today? Um, as always, thank you for tuning in. And I want to give you guys my quick little sales pitch. As always, if you guys are interested, feel free to join the Always an Athlete team. Seven-day free trial for those of you who are interested. We run, we jump, we sprint. We do all the fun things. We lift up our body, try and get a little more jacked. And all those um, you know, classic upper body exercises that you so hold close to your heart, like barbell curls and bench press. Yes, we do that. But we also sprint and we run because I think a good mixture of both is enjoyable. I don't like really training. I never have really liked training my lower body like a, a bodybuilder. I've always found it to be excessively fatiguing. It doesn't really yield many results that impact my life that much. Like, cool, I have big quads. Like, what's the point of big quads? Everyone understands the point of, you know, big arms and a shoulder, big chest and big, I guess, traps. And it looks, I guess, aesthetically appealing, especially when you're wearing a shirt that allows it to be seen or you're at the beach or whatever, but no one's going to differentiate and be like, those calves are the the aesthetic drivers. Um, no, I'd rather be able to run and jump and play the sports I love. So I lift my upper body a little bit more like a bodybuilder and I lift my lower body less like a bodybuilder and more like an athlete. So if you guys want to try that, that out, you're more than welcome to. And uh, seven day free trial when you give it a go. Also, by the way, a new um, edge U has been released. This is where myself and uh, Paul uh, PJF performance. I'm going to call this by his last name. But you guys probably know this PJF performance. Um, we have a website together where we share educational information, much more detailed presentations, video breakdowns, all that kind of stuff. So if you enjoy some of the science we have here, you might like some of the science we have there. Cause it's probably a little more detailed than this. Um, you can check that out. I'll put that in the show notes as well. So let's talk a little bit today. It's been a while. Everyone is doing well. Um, I have a couple of different things I've been chewing on, but I, I want to talk about um, one that you'll commonly see coming up, right? We have football season. Football season is one of those seasons where we love to glorify grit. It just, for some reason, football, I never played football. So everyone who's listening to this is like, well, I'm actually never played football. Well, how can you even have an opinion on this? Can it? I don't want to hear that. Um, let me just share my don't let, let me just share my opinion here. As an external observer, as football's always been the kind of like this gladiator kind of build up where it's grit, grind, um, pain, suffering, I'd call it, um, agony, and then glory. Right? Those are kind of all the things that fit together with the the football theme. And in that, you'll see tons of motivational speeches come out. People are all, and talking to teams, coaches, blah, 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 giving all these motivational speeches. And I kind of found that interesting. And I find that topic itself interesting because it's one of those topics where it doesn't always make total sense, at least in my opinion. Because I think motivation is one of those things that it's one of those things where A, it's fleeting. I've talked about that before on here. But it's not really <laughs> like what is motivation? Don't, no one ever asked that question. What is motivation? And when you really get down to it, people too often associate motivation with a feeling, a belief. More of a feeling, I think. I'll say most people associate it with a feeling. A feeling of urgency, of have to-ness. Oh, I got to get something done. But again, why? Now, it can be instilled because there is a certain level of camaraderie, and like an example of almost a mob mentality of everyone striving for something. So you too will strive for it. But really, that doesn't answer the question. And in my opinion, motivation is uh, an appraisal of value. If you perceive value, whether it is from internal, non-monetary aspects, you derive value out of something, enjoyment, intrinsic value or external value like money, all that other stuff. You're going to have other things that you then value less or more. So an example would be, imagine you're out in the desert and you are a collegiate football player and you have all your dreams and aspirations in front of you. 
but you don't have a bottle of water. What are you most motivated to do? Are you motivated to work out and achieve your collegiate football goals? Or in that moment, is water more valuable? And are you more motivated to find water for your sake of survival? So what we have there is we have a flexibility of motivation already on display. In the morning, you might be more or less motivated to do things than you are at night. I hope you don't wake up and you are inclined to just watch Netflix, but maybe in the evening, you have an inclination to watch Netflix. You're more motivated to do it. You derive value out of it. There is a context dependence aspect to motivation, time, environment, and so on. Because right? the morning is not a time or an environment where you're going to watch Netflix and do wind down things to get you ready for bed. Maybe Netflix is one of those, reading a book of a certain type, eating dinner. You're not going to just wake up and have like fried chicken. You're not going to have like a steak. Go have steak and eggs, I guess. But the point is, motivation is very flexible. So when you ask or find out why or why someone is motivated, it's not a motivation thing. It's a value or perception of derived values. So if someone's actions they're performing, their actions reflect their values. It's an interesting symmetry we have in life where we do things and the things we do reflect what we endear and what we endear reflect the things that we do or we value, I should say. Maybe endear is not the right word. Things that we value. If I value my health and wellness, I'm going to do things to improve my health and wellness. If I value my ability to bench press, I'm going to bench press. If I'm going to value my ability to have a podcast, I will continue to make a podcast. If I don't, I won't. And so it's reflectionary. Humans act within an environment. An environment is manipulated by what we do. I think Steve Jobs has a famous quote, you know, something amazing about the world is that you can poke it and something comes out the other side or something like that. And it's true, but that's something not the other side is a reflection of how you poked the world and how you operate it. And so if someone isn't doing something or someone isn't, you know, on time for a workout and someone isn't trying hard in the workouts, maybe they don't perceive the value of these workouts. And yelling at someone probably isn't going to increase their perception of value. <laughs> it's not like... I don't value these workouts. Now I show up to these workouts. And I don't value them that high. And someone's going to yell at me. I'm going to value that environment less. I get less value out of it. I get more value out of doing other things. So the question becomes why? If someone truly does value becoming a professional athlete or whatever it might be, you have to understand values are immediate moderate and long-term. There's a, there's a time access to them. The derived value acutely from working out isn't very much unless you enjoy the workout. But if you're trying to build muscles, the acute value of a workout is very low. If anything negative, it makes your muscles tired. But the moderate to long-term value is very high. You get bigger muscles and you achieve those goals. <clears throat> so our actions are stratified based on perceived value in the moment, and also ability to appraise future values. And so when you're talking to someone or trying to understand why or why not they want something, actually helping them understand how we perceive values could be a benefit. I'm not a psychologist. I should have prefaced all this, but I'm not a sports psychologist. I don't practice this stuff. I just watch social media and some guy with music on in the background yelling at you, how bad you want it. What is it? <laughs> right? Want what? Want to win? No. There are very few. This is speaking as a former athlete. There are very few athletes who are, let's say, don't get playing time and all they want to do is win. No. First, you want to play, then you want to win. You're not going to go to an adult league. I hope you don't do this. I hope you don't join an adult league and play for the absolute best team on that adult league just so you can win, but you don't play. Wrap your head around that. Think about that for a second. Imagine if you played beer league softball and you just wanted to win, 
So you found the best team and you didn't even play. Would you really do that? So the whole idea of you have to want it, you have to want to win, is a silly concept. Because not everyone's value is going to be winning. I, and as a matter of fact, their value might be, I want to contribute to winning. Now, it is still towards winning, but without their contribution, they will not win. <laughs> they, they just doesn't achieve the purpose. And people should understand that. Because in that situation, if someone... It's not like they don't want to win, by the way. It's not a... They, they value playing first and foremost. If someone wants to get on the field and they want to play and they know that they have to be better than the player in front of them, doesn't that make your team better? It's a classic example. Is the most selfish way you can act in this environment is to be selfless, right? It's in order to help myself the most. Let's say I lived way back in, you know, ancient Roman days or something. I could have one farm and I could have the world's greatest farm, or I could have a whole city working together. We have different farms and trades and I have access to more and more information, material goods and all this stuff because I decide to selflessly participate in this larger experiment of the city. Natural kind of markets take place and I now have access to different resources and goods that I wouldn't have access to if I just had the one best farm and put out everyone else, everyone else's farm. Like if you just acted selfish, like I want I want to have the best farm possible. And so you go out and you destroy everyone else's farms. Well, you just made yourself a world of hurt. Because guess what? They're all out of food and you got all the food. You're going to have a lot of people come knocking at your door. So that is not the best situation for yourself. That is stupid. The best situation for yourself might be having the best farm in a competitive market where there's other farms involved, or you have a top 5% farm. You still have the luxury of being a great farm, but you also have the luxury of the benefits would occur with other farms. And so the same thing in a team setting, you don't want all the, you just to play, you want to play because you're better than the other players. And if that situation occurs, then you are making the team better. And by default, you'll have a higher probability of winning. But people don't like to talk about things like this. They don't like to talk about the reality of stuff. They don't like to discuss what is motivation. What should I be motivated to do? What are the implications of being selfless and selfish and all these things? We all are independent humans. We don't recognize that often. We like to tell others to do certain things that we wouldn't do. Oh, yeah, everyone go ahead and just care about the team winning as I'm starting, baby. I gotta, I'm playing. Everyone else just care to win. Be happy you're on the bench. Try really hard on the bench. Stay on the bench because I get to play. Think about that. Same thing with motivation. Why or why not is someone motivated? Again, a reflection of the environment, their priorities, what they want, what they need their ability to praise their wants and needs over a period of time, acute, moderate, long-term. They might derive value from other things. Like they might enjoy playing video games more. They might say, oh, you know, I could be working out, but I don't get much value out of that. I'm not going to play. I'm going to rather just play video games. So this idea of, motiva of motivations, uh, and, and, and an ill-defined one at best. But with football season, my goodness. The videos you'll see of people working out. The cool music. Rocky. Who doesn't love watching Rocky run up some stairs? Remember Rocky lost in the first one, though? Rocky took an L. All right. People don't remember that. They remember the motivational scene. Runs up. One loves that. The grind. The wake up early and all this stuff. He fights the rush and he's out in the log cabin. Is that really the best way to do it? And do we as humans want to just be perceived as working hard and motivational? Do we value other people's opinions more? And that's an interesting psychological aspect to dive into is 
nowadays it's social media. Are we just simply valuing ourselves based on someone else's opinion? I thought about that quite a bit. You know, how many times would I wear a different outfit or do this or do that X, Y, and Z? If I didn't care what someone else thought. And is it important maybe to actually care what someone else thinks? Cause again, it's that whole idea of that community factor where if you do understand general values of the community, like having enough food and resources, you're going to make sure you provide enough value to have those resources and part of the community. So again, we talk about motivation. Here we are talking about ancient Roman times, having the biggest, best farm possible and how being self ish is actually a good way to be self selfless. Did I say that right? Um, if you have the only farm, you're going to have a lot of enemies and that's not a good situation. So moral of the story is as we wrap it up here before I go off on a total tangent is that um, we need to ask why critically think, ponder about these things, really question stuff and don't just question it like a dumbass, Like, like, like someone who's just like, well, why, why? why? question it by thinking you question it. I hate that. Always question everything. No, question everything means you question it through philosophical thought, not just like, why, why? In, because if someone can't answer it, then you're right. It doesn't make any sense. I hate that. Oh, why, why? And that person becomes to a point where they're at a philosophical crux and they can't figure out, you know, because they're at a, cause a lot of things in life. If you just get down to the very, very bottom of it, there is some fact you can just go of undeterminedness. You can just go to like a physicist and keep saying why, and eventually you get to quantum mechanics. And like, oh, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Therefore I'm right. No, no, don't think like that. Lazy. You think about it. Ponder your evidence towards something. Question it in terms of you investigate it. You provide evidence, actions, and understandings. Don't just question it by like, oh, you must be wrong. But the blind acceptance of something is also not always the best either. The blind acceptance of this is motivation and this is how we have to do it isn't right. But questioning it in terms of, well, if it's not it, what other possibilities exist and what are some things that might go into it? So share with you all today. I hope you guys enjoy. I appreciate you all listening. As always, thank you. Feel free to share and whatnot. Take care. Appreciate you all. Peace out.